Hey guys, so this video is on dimensional analysis. Um, dimensional analysis, you guys, is, is a really valuable tool. Um, um, it'll help you in chemistry. Actually, um, I use it for things other than chemistry too. It, it, it works really well. Um, what it is, it's an approach that helps you to solve many, but not all the problems that you're going to see, um, well, in chemistry for sure. Um, <clears throat> Dimensional analysis uses conversion factors. Conversion factors are relationships between different units. For example, a conversion factor could be is one foot is equal to 12 inches. Um, that's a conversion factor that relates feet and inches. Um, the way that dimensional analysis works is that all you have to do is you have to set up your equation so that the units of the conversion factors cancel out algebraically until you end up with the unit that you're trying to find. I'll demonstrate it for you. When I say cancel out algebraically, I mean just like if you have an algebraic equation, you have an x in the numerator and an x in the denominator, they cancel. Same thing here, that's what we're trying to do. All right, so let's look at this. Um, you get these conversion factors. These conversion factors are really important. Um, they're the, you know, what you use with, with, with a dimensional analysis. Um, you get them from several places. One um, are these tables that I'm giving you right here. Um, this, these are tables of prefixes. And so um, these are conversion factors. Um, for example, if you have 20 kilograms, K is kilo, you can replace that K with what it means here, times 10 to the third. So you could say something like 20 kilograms is equal to um, 20 times 10 to the third grams, where all you've done is you've replaced the, um, the prefix with what it means. So like this, so we could say 20 kilograms is equal to 20 times 10 to the third grams. Well, what I've done is I've replaced the K with what it means from this table, times 10 to the third. That's a conversion factor. Um, there are some more conversion factors here. Um, when I say, okay, so when I say memorize, that means that um, like absolutely, you know, absolutely start, you know, memorizing them, but also put them on your card, your index card for the exams. So these are some more that we're going to use um, for our dimensional analysis problems. So the best way to demonstrate this procedure is to do some examples. So let's start out with this one right here. Um, the question, is, what we want to do is we want to find out how many cubic centimeters there are in 543.9 fluid ounces. And the first step in dimensional analysis, dimensional analysis is to find the units of your answer right on the left side of an equal sign. So these are the steps. So we want to find how many cubic centimeters, so that's the unit of our answer. And so we write blank centimeters cubed equals. That's step one. Step two. Figure out what, what I call your starting point is, what you're converting into, in this case, centimeters cubed. Here, we want to convert 543.9 fluid ounces into centimeters cubed. Um, now, the starting point will always have a number and a unit. The answer, we're trying to fill in this blank and put the number there so it doesn't have a number yet. So, step two, we write how many cubic centimeters is equal to our starting point, 543.9 fluid ounces. Next, step three, determine the conversion factors that you're going to need um, in order to convert our the units of our starting point into the units of our answer. In this case, fluid ounces into centimeters cubed. Now, so here, here um, this step right here is where a little bit of experience um, really comes in handy. Once you've done this um, a few times, you start getting better and, and faster at this step right here. Um, so what I do, the way I think about it in my mind, is I look at the units of my starting point and I go look at that table where I think about um, you know, what I know about fluid ounces. Um, your conversion factors, you, usually you get them from uh, three places. Those tables that I gave you, and I'll give you some more as we go along. Um, sometimes in the problem itself, there's not one in this, this problem here, but sometimes you're given a conversion factor in the, the, the problem. And as we go through this course, um, I'll, uh, as we cover different material, I'll give you some conversion factors that relate to that material. But here, all we need are the um, conversion factors, or some of the conversion factors that we saw in that table. So I go back, look at that table, and say, well, one thing I know about fluid ounces is I can convert it to quarts. And that's an exact conversion. Um, meaning that 
basically there's an infinite number of significant figures on both of these numbers. Well, what do I know about quartz? So my goal, right, so this is centimeters cubed, it's an SI unit, right? Um, also, by the way, in the back of my mind, I'm, I'm thinking that I know this, that centimeters cubed is the same as milliliters, so that's kind of back there too. So anyway, so I go, um, I can go from quartz to liters, that gets me into my SI units. Remembering that centimeters cubed is milliliters, say, well, I can just convert um, milliliters to liters, and that'll give me a conversion factor between liters and milliliters by uh, replacing the prefix milli with what it means, times 10 to the minus 3. That's exact 2. And then 1 milliliter is 1 centimeter cubed. So what I'm doing is I'm thinking, I'm saying, okay, so fluid ounces, this gets me to quartz. Then from quartz, I can go to liters, liters to milliliters, milliliters to centimeters cubed. So at this point, I can see, just kind of thinking about it, that I have an unbroken connection between the units of my starting point and the units of my answer. That tells me that I have conversion factors that I need. Uh, real quick, there's almost always more than one path you can take, um, and it's still correct. There's usually, you know, almost always, like I said, um, different ways, different conversion factors you can use to get to your answer. Um, I use two criteria when I'm trying to figure out the path I'm going to take. Usually I, want, I look for the shortest, but also the more, the more exact conversions I can use, the better I like it. All right, so let's finish this out. So step four says, set the equation up so that the units cancel algebraically. So we know we have, we're starting with fluid ounces on the top. Cancel algebraically means we have to have the units of fluid ounces in the denominator of the first con con um, conversion factor so that they cancel. So what I do is I go down to my list of um, conversion factors, find fluid ounces, there it is, 32. Now whatever you guys is on the other side of the equal sign, in this case one quart, goes in the top, in the numerator. So I write this, I cross them out, then I say, okay, so now I'm, fluid ounces are gone, now I'm at quartz. Find quartz down here, there it is, I have to have quartz in the bottom, so I put 1.0567 quartz in the bottom, one liter, the other side of the equal sign on top, cancel now, liters cancel, milliliters cancel, now I end up with centimeters cubed. Um, one thing that is um, that I always do, it's very useful, it, it, I catch myself if I make a mistake setting it up this way, physically make yourself cross off those units. Um, that way if like you go to cross off fluid ounces and you realize, oh, fluid ounces isn't down there, that's quartz, you got it backwards. It's, it's real quick and it's really, really useful. All right, so um, what I do is I, now that I have everything set up, um, and by the way, I cross out each conversion factor as I use it so that I don't um, mistakenly use it again plug these numbers into my calculator, get the answer. Um, sig figs, looking at these, this is exact, this has five sig figs, um, these ones are exact, this is exact, this is exact. So this has four, the least is four, so I know I'm gonna have four sig figs. Uh, so I get 1.6084 and some other numbers times 10 to the fourth centimeters cubed. Last step just says round to the correct number of significant figures. So I could either write 16,080 centimeters cubed with no decimal point or 1.608 times 10 to the fourth centimeters cubed. Um, either one of those is just fine. So let's look at one more example. Let's me it lets me show you a, a little trick here. Let's say we want to calculate how many cubic inches there are in a 5.02 liter engine. Okay, so we'll go through our steps. First, units of our answer, inches cubed. Um, equals, second step, starting point, 5.02 liters. Three, conversion factors. Well, um, I'm, uh, what I'm doing is I'm thinking in my mind, well, I don't think, and I, I know there wasn't, there is no conversion factor that goes directly from inches cubed and centimeters cubed. But, here's a little trick here, guys. I do have a conversion factor that goes between inches and centimeters. If you go look at that table, one inch is exactly equal to 2.54 centimeters. So to get the conversion I need here, all I have to do is cube both sides of that conversion factor, just like I have right here. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I can go from liters to milliliters, milliliters to centimeters cubed, centimeters cubed to inches. All right, so I have my conversion factors, set it up, liters cancel, I have to cancel liters, so I make sure it goes in the bottom. I'm left with milliliters, make sure that cancels. Now I have centimeters cubed, make sure that cancels, and I have inches cubed in the top. So plug this into my calculator, I end up with three sig figs because of the 5.02, everything else here is exact, 
and my answer is 3.06 inches cubed. And that's all there is to it.